Well on the Lenny Henry Show. Thoroughbred jockey from the DJ stable, the king author of the chill turntable, beaming you the music at the speed of rhyme. I'm light years ahead of my time. I wanna get into it, man. Bouncing hard fight from a satellite, aliens body rocking all day and night. Somewhere between Mars and Mercury, you see a new cycle of Christianity. I'm getting too old for this lark, you know, Delbert. Think yourself lucky, Winston. Your arms are only getting mildly stretched. I could make you go back upstairs and bring down Barry White. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the weight, Delbert. It's the waiting up. Here we are, well after one o'clock in the morning. Even the burglars are tucked up in their beds. Well, probably not their own beds, come to think of it. <laughs> Look at that, Winston. Bump it up, Wazim. <laughs> Crucial FM is a beacon of hope in a dull, dull world. Like when Sue Lawley sits in for Wogan. And we are its representatives down here on Earth, spreading forth the gospel of hip-hop, funk, soul, and good times. What? At Tebbit's? In Bad? <laughs> a gig is still a gig, Winston. Now, liven yourself up! The old posse is back together again. Butch and Sundance. Yeah, that's right, Butch. While I'm setting the soles of their feet on fire, you, Butch, can be breaking the girlies' hearts. What do you say? You know. Yeah. You're right, Delbert. I should be having fun while I'm still young. Well, we're still young, Winston. We, well, we're still young, remember? <laughs> I'm still only 29 and three quarters. Now then, here's the playlist for tonight's rumble. The Doctor of Funk is back on the case. I'm going to cut them open with Africa Bambata and family. I'm going to remove their vital organs with James Brown on full force. And before I get sued for malpractice, I'm going to stitch them back up again with Run DMC. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Doctor. I don't think I've put them in, no. Well, you better run back upstairs and get them. Otherwise, I'll chop off your army. Wet, wet, wet. No, 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 no. <laughs> Always works. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Delver, I've been stood here for an hour now and you've hardly spoken to me. Sorry, there was one get down which was meant for me, I think. People don't come to clubs to talk, Claudette. Well, the boss DJ does, you know what I mean? <laughs> and besides, I could pull in thousands of new listeners for Crucial FM at this gig tonight. 23, actually, I'll count them. Exactly. And these must be Winston's listeners. Don't worry, man. Word of mouth will solve all of that. By tomorrow, the name Delbert Wilkins will be like so many sycamore seeds in the wind, wafting across the countryside, and then landing in the fallow ground, and then sprouting into mighty oak trees in wicked suits. Talking of suits, Delbert, we need there, to... I am working, all right? I mean, when the Pope is on the balcony in St. Peter's Square, rapping to his adoring friend, does this old lady come on and say, Oi, John Paul, I want a word. <laughs> Space, you know. Right, since you've reminded me, it's time I got on my bike for work. Even Winston's got time to talk to his lady, look. Sure, that's no lady. That's his ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is Double Wilkins, the Moolin X of the decks. we mix it so quick, two discs melt into one. That's right. We're having big fun. So kick back, relax, while we do it to you in your eardrum. Let me hear say crucial. Say crucial. Why, this posse is dead, you know. Get back to the You know what? How do you reckon it's going then, Delbert? Well, thank you very much for asking me, Winston. I'll tell you how it's going. My faithful roadie and posse, Winston, has deserted me to appear in an episode of Blind Date with his ex-wife. The Balam Soul Patrol looks as though it could do with an extra set of Zimmer frames, and that girl has got more humps than the M25. That's how it's going, Winston. <laughs> oh, so you're in a bad mood then? Winston, don't wind me up. Cheer me up. Tell me about all the aggravation you're getting from your ex, Pauline. <laughs> well, actually, she wants more maintenance. Haven't we played them twice already tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and then I increased it by five pounds because of the kid, right? And then she says she wants another 20 for clothes and toys. But the other day, Del, but when I went round there, she was wearing a new dress and playing Monopoly. Well, 
What do you reckon then? I reckon that if you whinge on to her the way you are to me, Winston, she'll pay you to stay out of her life forever. Oh, nice, good gig. Shut up, Wazim! <laughs> Shush, this has been a happy show. Acha, ab mera program khatam hone wala hai, lekin aap log chaliye nahi jaye. Kyunke mera dost Delbert Wilkins aa rahe. Tell him I got run over by Chubby Checker and the Fat Boys, Wazim. I've just announced your return, oh great one. Yo, Dob, it's been down at Ballam tearing the roof off the sucker. So now he's gonna hit you with a two hour mellow cool down. You've been listening to Wa 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 Wasim, the man who put the bad in his lover bag. And remember, a rose is not a rose without its thorns. Yeah, try telling that to some geezer with a cactus in his ear. <laughs> what is with you two? We're both suffering from fear of sexual harassment. Yeah, this is Delbert Wilkins, or what's left of him anyway. Let's kick off the show with a little weather forecast. Oi, shift. Well, it's looking well stormy out there at the moment. <laughs> There's a depression settling overhead. It's raining in my heart. In fact, the only silver lining around is in my suit. <laughs> Let's start off the evening's proceedings with a little tune like this. You guys are the victims of Western civilization. Now me, I've got an arranged marriage lined up. Right. Takes care of all my worries. You want to worry about who's going to arrange a divorce, man? <laughs> Winston, dig out cameo, single life. I need to remind myself that it's still all right. There you go. Thanks, man. Will that be all then? Yeah, unless you know where I can buy a vacuum cleaner at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right, that'll be 20 quid. For the night. That was the new arrangement, wasn't it? Wages? Winston, we only got £40 for the gig! <laughs> <laughs> and there's my stand-in fee, of course. Oh, here. Take it all. Take! Nice one. There you go, Wazim. Cheers. Come and I'll give you a lift. So, bit of a lottery for you then, is it? Marriage? Not really. I told me well, Dad who to arrange it with. <laughs> Some Sundance kid I turned out to be, eh? Instead of Paul Newman for a posse, I end up with Deputy Dog. <laughs> oh, sorry, Del, but no. No what, Winston? No, I don't know where you can get a vacuum cleaner from at four o'clock in the morning. Bravestone Broadcasting Corporation. Oh, now this one's interesting. The lady likes your laissez-faire style. Lassie? Oh. <laughs> That must have been the show I did when I had the cough. It's laissez, it's French for letting things happen as they come along. Which is English for cocking things up. <laughs> Dear Jumbo Winston, your ears aren't that big, are they? Uh, I think this is from my ex-wife. <laughs> Hello, Managing Director, Comfy Lux Child and Baby Care. Yes, this is the Managing Director of the BBC. Opens all the doors, eh? Now, sir, do you want to reach that large female domestic engineer market? That's right, housewives. Well, today's your lucky day, sir. I don't... That's Pauline, all right. Trying to put the bite on me now that I'm earning. Don't come the Alex Winston. Divorce is a two-way street, man. Yeah, well, all I seem to get is parking tickets. <laughs> Winston, when a farmer sows his seeds in a field, he nurtures them so they grow tall and strong. He tends his crop. Yeah, well, he probably didn't have a kid to support, did he? <laughs> I knew you'd understand, Winston. Look, Julie, the way I see it is, right, nothing is clear-cut in the battle of the sexes, and even language becomes a casualty. Hey, Winston, that's uncanny, cos that could have been me talking. It was you. I've been doing some upside-down reading on that. <laughs> Delbert taught it to me. He said it was a crucial skill. <laughs> oh, they're just a few notes I had for a discussion programme. But don't tell Alex, cos when I mentioned a phone-in about sexual problems, he dimmed all the lights and opened up a bottle of Retsina. <laughs> Retsina! Good idea, Julie. But business first. I've got a Mr Comfy Lux who's ready to shove some big ads our way if we shove some mother and baby topics into our programmes. Winston? Bit of a sore point with me, that is, Alex. Yeah, and it could get sorer. 
Yeah, what's the matter with you? My hormones are doing handstands at the moment. <laughs> and yours could join mine in a bit of synchronised swimming if you let them. <laughs> Since the age of baby boo. Cobblers, Alex, the only reason why your hormones are into gymnastics is because they smell a cash boom. Yeah, if we did a programme on nappy rash, we could call it rawhide. Boom boom. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, brilliant. Winston is a broadcaster with his finger on the public pulse. If you two carry on like this for much longer, my finger will be down my throat. <laughs> Winston, just check this running order, will you? Get the old grey matter going. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't read this. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> <clears throat> Have a nice day at the office, dear. <laughs> Hello, Parks and Gardens. Yeah, I'd like to report a missing flower bed. Claudette! <laughs> I bought these myself with my own money. Look, I have a receipt. Look, I'm, I'm just trying to be pleasant, all right? I'm saying it with flowers. This one says, I'm sorry I didn't pay you enough attention last night. <laughs> this one says, how do you fancy going out for a nice romantic meal? This one says, oh, blimey, you look gorgeous. Well, this one's telling me to ignore the Pratt. Never liked that one. <laughs> look, I'm sorry, Delbert, but I just don't feel right about you being at my place tonight, OK? All right, we can stay at mine. Wasim will be there, of course, but I'll get him to slip on some Alexander O'Neill. We can go in the next room, crack open a bag of Shanghai nuts and chill, chilly, chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't fancy that much either. <laughs> Look, man, all I really want to do is to be here, with you. No music, no DJs, just us and some flowers. That's what I'd like. You sure about that? Yeah. I didn't get through till 6.30 this morning. There was nothing in the fridge that didn't have green fur on it. It was like the Muppet Show in there, you know what I mean? <laughs> I tried to sleep on my sofa bed, but it was so uncomfortable without a mattress, it was like sleeping in a police cell. I kept waking up thinking, what's the charge? What's the charge? <laughs> So all this hey babe, let's get serious bit is more to do with Claudette having a change of sheets than Delbert having a change of heart. Hey Dad, listen, I really feel that I want to make a, well almost make a, a commitment to you, you know, a serious commitment <laughs> in a couple of days or so. <laughs> Probably. You mean you want to move in and become my full-time partner, sharing our lives and our problems? <laughs> yeah, 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 all right, yeah, yeah, why not? Let's go for it, man. Even though I'm pregnant, 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 Baby, but I thought you said we were protected, you know. Um, um, one word sounds like ill. The pill? Yes. Well, I was, but I wasn't for a while when I changed prescriptions. I did tell you, but that happened to coincide with the day that you heard about your job on television, remember? Oh. <laughs> right. Cocktails up west. Dinner and wine, champagne back at my place, that black lacy outfit and the heels. I bet I was irresistible. Irresponsible, I'd say, but then I was too. I mean, an accountant who trusts a man with no bank account to make a withdrawal deserves all she gets. So what are we going to do? Oh, I'm going to go ahead with it. 
But don't worry, darling, I don't expect anything from you. I've done a lot of thinking, and I can support and bring up this baby on my own. All the responsibility can be mine, because you are going through a very important stage of your life. Adolescence. <laughs> Claudette, I may have unwittingly added to my listening figures, but believe me, I, I want to do the right thing. If I can work out what it is. Okay, just take your time. Yeah, but no longer than nine months, right? No. I'm going to the hospital tomorrow morning for my first scan. No pressure, but it'd be nice if you could be there. Scan? Yeah, they take a picture of the fetus using ultrasound. Ultrasound? That sounds like the kind of tunes I play, man. <laughs> I'll be in my box, we'll blow the joint down. Baby will be going, party! <laughs> no, it sound waves. They use the same technique to search for the Loch Ness Monster. Well, they're not going to find him in there, I hope. <laughs> All right, mistakes and how to avoid them. That's tonight's household hint from Delbert Wilkins. And when I say household, right, I really mean bedroom, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I have to be careful what I say here because there's a firm of geezers listening to this, checking out the airways for any little bits of noise. And this firm is called Williams, Reese and Mug. <laughs> so for their benefit, check this out, right? When you're taking something hotter at the cooker, you'd wear a pair of oven gloves, wouldn't you, to protect your hands? <laughs> right? And also, when you're cooking, you wear an apron to stop your threads being splattered in tomato-coloured polka dots. <laughs> so guys, next time you hit the bedroom in that dizzy mood for romancing, just think of it as a kitchen and dress accordingly, all right? <laughs> Hang on, hang on. There's a geezer in Wandsworth taking this literally. Listen, man. Take off the oven gloves and the apron, otherwise your girlfriend will shin down the drain pipe, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, and you ladies can take evasive action too, right? So I want you to put a sign on the bedroom ceiling or on the wall or under the bed, whatever turns you on, right? Go on, do it now before I put a sexy record on. And it should say something like, clunk, click, every trip. <laughs> Or ask yourself that question that yuppie newspaper's always asking. You know the one. He is. Are you? Because <laughs> if he isn't, you soon will be. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's get mellow with a bit of this business. Loose end style. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you tell them that you're in that same situation, Delbert? That's hypocrisy. No, it isn't, Winston. It's discretion. I do not want my private life trailed all over the Sunday Murdochs, you know. Delbert Wilkins in Love Child Dilemma. See centre spread for pics and horoscope. Dilemma. Does that mean you don't know what to do? Of course I don't know what to do, Winston. 24 hours ago, I was single and carefree. Now I'm like Atlas. I have the world on my shoulders. Charles Atlas. I don't know his first name. <laughs> all I know is who some poor Greek geezer got lumber with carrying the globe around all the time. Ah, I thought he wrote the A to Z personally. <laughs> anyway. Seeing that we're talking about Greeks and babies, poor old Julie's really upset, you know, Delbert. Yeah, because of Alex. He wants me to do childcare advice on my show. I know nothing about children. Winston, I don't want to hear about your career, right? It's mine that's in the balance. Only consolation about this is my mum isn't in the country. That's cool. You know what I mean? Oh, she's coming back! <laughs> don't worry. Laissez faire. Laissez faire. <laughs> as the French would say. Well, as the Cockneys would say, why don't you shut your north and south or I'll knee you in the orchestra? <laughs> Sis, hi. You don't mind your big brother joining you for the ultrasound, do you? Ultrasound, Delbert. Sit down, why don't you, brother? If you insist on pretending to be my brother, I must warn you of the legal implications of being the father of my baby. <laughs> It certainly brightened up these maternity hospitals since you and me were born, eh, sis? <laughs> uh, she's a miss at the moment, but not for long. <laughs> Sister, what are you doing with her, mate? <laughs> right. If you just loosen your trousers and lie on the couch... <laughs> not too sir, mate. Bunch is enough. Delbert. She never mentioned the name. 
You can get computerized mixing desks nowadays, you know. In a year's time, DJs will be obsolete. Let's hope so. This is your first scan, isn't it, love? Mm. All we do is run this pad over your tummy, and we get an image of the fetus on there. Measure it, check its development. See which way it's parting its hair, maybe. <laughs> that hardly ranks as crucial information. Actually, for him, you couldn't be more wrong. You know what I mean? I want my nephew or nephewette to realise that style begins in the womb, you know what I mean? Oh, I thought he was your partner. Lucky escape. Right, I'll just put some lubricant on. Rub up on my belly like guava jelly. We may also be able to detect any hereditary defects. Though not insanity, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I've seen this one before, man. This voyage to the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Captain to helm, ten degrees to starboard, prepare to for firing. <laughs> Can we lose the commentary, please, Delbert? Just trying to bring a bit of fun to an otherwise boring occasion. Just trying... Winston, these are your topics for this afternoon. Wind, names, clothes, prams, and uh, if you've got the stomach for it, breastfeeding. It's not a matter of having the stomach for it, Alex. It's the, uh, it's the other things I haven't got. Well, you just use your imagination. Don't you think that Julie should be doing this? I mean... Look, if I was to line the route from her desk to here with 50 quid notes, I still couldn't get her to the microphone. Talk about stubborn. But honest, obviously. Well, let's get this little old bandwagon rolling, shall we? Guys and girls. <laughs> DJ Winston on the BBC. Good afternoon, listeners. Now, if you think that John Stalker is the only cop on radio, well, cop this. Here's Constable Lily. What have you got lined up for us this afternoon, Constable Lily, sir? Well, suspects, I hope. Yes, today I'm going to be presenting a brand new junior edition of Cop Shop because a large percentage of crime is committed by the under fives. So... <laughs> If we can nick him early, we can save ourselves a lot of problems in later life. <laughs> Isn't that so, Winston? But let's talk about earlier problems first, and they don't come much earlier than wind. How to get it out of the infant's body. <laughs> Constable Lily here may well suggest tapping him on the back with a truncheon. <laughs> Only joking, listeners. But we shall have some more positive advice for you coming up after the break. Comfy Lux, Comfy Lux. With everything you need, a new addition to your life. Fifty pounds a minute. That's what we're making on this, Julie. I don't care. It's giving me nappy rash of the ears. I've got this overwhelming urge to smear Vaseline on the speakers. I demand the right to reply. Sure. Any time after midnight, when the kids are in bed. <laughs> Hi, Julie. Alex. Delbert. Go on, Claudette Flower, you go first. I think you better have both of them, Julie. Delbert and I having a baby. Well, congratulations. Well, I guess that's a thing to say. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, I'm sure about it, but Delbert isn't. I don't really know where I stand with him. That would be a shot, I'd say. <laughs> One minute he's fainting at the prospect, the next he's putting the kid's name down for an account at Giorgio Armani. <laughs> no, he's probably just adjusting to the shock, Claudette, because men can be dead weird about babies. And take Alex, he's more gaga about them at the minute. Do you mind if I tell him your news? No, of course not. Who, oh, Alex? Your old friend Delbert? He's having a baby? Delbert? A baby? <laughs> He'll stop at nothing to rip off my programme ideas. Oh, darling, how are you doing? Still standing, then. 
Claudette, if that nurse hadn't broken my fall, right, my car would have been severely injured, you know what I mean? <laughs> I just come to get some uh, records. Got a show to do tonight. Delbert, didn't this morning mean anything to you? Claudette, I once saw James Brown live in concert, right? I once swallowed a whole bottle of Senna. But today was the most moving experience of my life. <laughs> when I saw that little baby breakdancing and blowing raspberries at me on that screen, my brain just went for a walk outside my head. <laughs> I'm with you 100% on this, man. So does that mean you'll tell your mum now? Uh, no, I thought I'd leave that to you. She arrives tomorrow. No pressure, but it'd be nice if you could be there. <laughs> Oops, I nearly forgot. This is Julie Jackson with the first edition of Women Talking. Tonight my guest is Claudette Chandler, who will be telling us about the woman. Yeah, thanks, Julie. I just wanted to discuss how straightforward bringing up a baby can be when the father's not around. Well, you may get a chance to find out sooner than you think. I mean, getting pregnant's one thing, but setting up as a rival radio person is completely another. <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> crucial FM. All right, welcome to this week's Guide to Cruciality. And this one is so crucial that I'm letting you people at home hear it first before my listeners even get a chance to hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's an exclusive offer. Just think of me as the Littlewoods catalogue with shoulder pads. <laughs> Now then, speaking of exclusive offers, how can you refuse when the lady in your life says she wants to have your baby? A lot of dudes watching this are saying, easy, like this. Nah, man. <laughs> well, I almost did, right? But first of all, I went out onto the street to ask some serious questions like, are babies noisier than having the Beastie Boys perform live in your bedroom? Do they keep you up all night worse than if you'd swallowed that chilly hole like you shouldn't have? Do you have to keep changing them all the time? Do they scream and shout until they get their own way? Or my mate said, yeah, that's exactly what babies are like. And I thought, well, that's all right. They sound just like me. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to having a spondicious baby, man. I'm going to take him down the junior branch of Paul Smith, where the baggy trousers are ideal for sliding over the baggy nappies. <laughs> I'm going to buy him a Sony Craw, man. <laughs> and invite him on my late night chat show if he can't sleep. So this is Derbert Wilkins saying, yo, babies can be crucial, you know what I mean? Only trouble is they grow up. <laughs> Cut this. Comfy Lux Baby Care sent me a load of freebies so I can give most of this to Pauline, yeah, to help her out with the maintenance. But I thought you might need some of these disposable nappies for your bottom drawer. <laughs> Never mind the baby, Winston. These will make a spondicious mattress for my sofa bed, you know what I mean? <laughs> We got here on time, Claudette. It'll be at least another five hours before they get questioned by customs and strip searched by immigration. That's just where you're wrong, brother. Wow, the VIP lounge. You must be a big super duper in records or cricket. <laughs> oh, nice to see you both. Now, Delbert, I have some news for you. This is Mr. Dixon, your new stepfather. Well, wow, Mr. Dixon, nice to see you, you know. Nice to buck up with a yard, you know, and again, you see it. Easy. Well, very nice to meet you, Delbert. <laughs> well, uh, we've got some good news for you, too, ma'am. Oh. Meet your new grandchild. <sighs> see? Runs in the family. 